So in this video, we're going to talk about the ideas of momentum and impulse. So you probably have an intuition about what momentum is, and it typically, uh, when you think about momentum, we think about something that wants to carry you forward or for you to continue your motion. So it has something to do with inertia. So if we look at these two examples where we have a golfer hitting a golf ball and we have a bowling ball rolling down uh, a bowling lane. So we would look at this and say, okay, which one has more momentum? Does the golf ball have more momentum or does the bowling ball have more momentum? So typically people want to say, well, the golf ball seems like it would more, have more momentum because it's probably moving a lot faster. Whereas some people would answer B, saying that the bowling ball has a lot more momentum because it's heavier, even though it's not moving quite as fast. And when you're correct in both thoughts, we can't really tell from this example which one has more momentum, but it's obvious from these examples that we understand something about the ideas of momentum, that it has something to do with the mass of the object that's moving, but also it has to do with the velocity that the object is moving. So the equation for momentum is actually that P, which is the variable we use for momentum, is equal to mass times velocity. So exactly what um, we thought. And if you look, that means that the unit for momentum, because the unit for mass is kilograms and the unit for velocity is meters per second, is simply just kilograms times meters per second. Now let's go ahead and just do a simple example underneath the ELMO for now. All right, so let's say that we have a car and, or a car of sorts, we won't make it a big car, and let's just say that it's five kilograms, and it's moving to the right at a velocity of, say, like six meters per second. So that's just a very simple problem. We have that the momentum is equal to m times b, so the mass would be five kilograms, the velocity is 6 meters per second, and I end up with 30 kilograms times, oops, not divided by, times meters per second, right? So real simple calculation. What's important to keep in mind is that velocity is a vector, so that makes momentum also a vector. When we looked at the idea of energy um, in the previous videos in this unit, Energy does not have a direction, so therefore it is not a vector. It only has a magnitude. But here, we'll have to remember and take into consideration whether or not the uh, momentum is positive or negative. Now, if we had another example, so let's say we had a different car. Whoop, the wheels are down here. <laughs> we have a different car. Let's just say it's 4 kilograms, and it is moving in this direction, let's say, at 3 meters per second. Well, here in this case, I would say, well, 3 meters per second is actually to the left, and since I made 6 positive, I'm going to have to make this negative. So my momentum here is actually negative 12 kilograms times meters per second. Okay? So just keep in mind that uh, momentum is a vector and it has a direction, and so it will be important to note that um, later when we do a conservation of momentum. All right, so there's one other idea that I want to introduce to you um, in this video, and it's the idea of impulse. So if we look at a, um, this example of the egg versus the wall, okay? So essentially what happens is if I take an egg and I throw it really hard at the wall, it's going to strike the wall and uh, it's going to crack, right? So what actually happened in terms of the physics? Well, the wall exerted a force on the egg, and it caused the egg to slow down really fast, okay, or to decelerate. Remember, force equals mass times acceleration. And then the egg came to a stop, and in the process, that force was so strong that it caused the egg to crack. So we smashed the egg. Now, if I were to take an egg and I were to throw it against a sheet, all right, so instead of having a wall, let's say I had a really tightly stretched sheet across some um, like window or something like that. If I were to take the egg and I were to throw it at this sheet, the egg then would also encounter the sheet. The sheet would slow it down until it stopped, but the egg would never break. Well, why is this the case? It's the case because 
it takes the same amount of force to cause that egg to stop because remember that force equals mass times acceleration. But when you throw the egg against something that is elastic, that force instead of being exerted all at once is going to be distributed over a certain time period. And as it's distributed for a certain time period, there's never a great enough force at any one time period to actually crack the egg. And this is the idea of momentum. So let's look at where, or sorry, of impulse. So let's look at where the equation actually comes from impulse. So remember, according to Newton's second law, we have force equals mass times acceleration. Now we learned um, in the very first unit that acceleration is the change in velocity over time. So I've got V final minus V initial all over T. So if we go ahead and solve that equation, we get uh, for impulse that is F times T equals the change in MV. So let's just go back up and see where that comes from. I just multiplied by T on both sides. So I bring it over here and I have a force times time. That's impulse. It's Newton's time seconds. It's kind of a weird unit. But it's actually the uh, impulse is what it takes to change the momentum of the object or essentially change its velocity. So here we get Ft is equal to the change in mv. All right, so if we look at an example of this, the force can sometimes be constant. So we say you exert two newtons for, you know, five seconds. Then we know the impulse would be 10 newtons times seconds. Right? And, or that would be the change in the momentum. However, the, uh, sometimes the force can be variable over a time interval, and so you may see the equation written like this, that the average force times the time is equal to the change um, in momentum. So let me just go ahead and do an example before I uh, send you off to do some class work and some practice problems with both momentum and, and impulse. All right? So let's say that I uh, throw that egg, right? And the egg is initially going at um, uh, 5 meters per second. So the egg is flying, and it's going to hit this sheet. And as it hits this elastic sheet over here, there is going to be a force exerted, so a force applied, of 2 newtons. Okay. And I could ask myself, well, all right, given that the egg weighs 0.2 kilograms, how much time does it take for that uh, egg to stop? So what would be the T could be a question, right? So here we would just have Ft equals uh, the change in mv. Well, the mass isn't going to change. It's just going to be the velocity that changes. And the velocity is going to go from a final or an initial of 5 to a final of uh, 0, right? So all I get is that force is 2 newtons times T is equal to the change in MV, so 0 0.2 times 5, right? So if I plug that in, I actually think I get 1 half, right? So 0 0.2 times 5 divided by 2 is 1 half. So it takes a half a second in order to stop that egg by applying that force. Now, if I wanted to answer the question of what is impulse, impulse is force times time. So in that case, I would just do 2 newtons times 0.5 seconds, and that gives me an answer of 1 newtons times seconds. Okay? So this itself is impulse. It's two variables together, which is a little strange. All right. Now, let's just look at one other example where we have to deal with the idea of average force. All right. So let's say we have on a graph, we have force and we have time. Right. And let's say that the initial force starts here at 5, 10, 20, or 10, 15, 20. And let's say we go for one, two, three, four seconds. And I were to plot some data points for what the force was at each initial case, or at each different time period. Now this um, is a common example. When we look at the sheet, you would know that as the sheet was stretched, that the force would become stronger. However, however in the other example, I just said it was a constant force. So here we see the force changing over time. 
And so in order to solve this, I would take the average force. So what is the impulse in this case? Well, it's the force average times time is what impulse is in this case, or the change in momentum. So I would say, okay, initially I had 5 newtons, and at the end I had 20 newtons. Well, what's the average of those two numbers? Well, you add them together and divide by 2. So 20 plus 5 is 25, divided by 2 is 12 and a half. And that is the average force that's exerted over a 4 second time period. So what would the impulse be? 50 newtons times seconds. Okay, so in some instances we're going to have a force that is the same the entire time. In other instances we'll have a force that is changing over time and we'll need to take the average of such a number. Alright, so now you should have enough, um, you know, introduction to the basic ideas of momentum and impulse that you can start working on the momentum and impulse worksheet.